We really believe that the media industry is in a major interregnum, which means it's in a gap. It's in a pause. Uh, a lot of people see that it's in a downfall, that media, major media industry companies are failing, that they're losing money hand over fist. Uh, and there are a variety of reasons of why that happens. Uh, but what we found is that uh, what most people point to signposts of disasters, disaster, we actually see our signposts of opportunity. So this is where the Edison Project, our three years of research that, we're gonna, that I'm going to share today, actually has evolved from. We think that not since Edison created the kinetoscope has there been so much disruption in the media and entertainment business. And so with that, we see that there are new opportunities to actually come out of these challenges. And we looked at it from four different research areas. One is on new funding and business models. Another one is on new screens. Then the leveraging engagement work is on new metrics and measurements. And then you can't forget that there are definitely new creators and makers who are just starting things in more open, adaptable platforms than having to wait until that one media and entertainment company writes them a big check. It becomes very important that uh, we all acquire the new media literacies, which is a new set of social school skills and cultural competencies that we all have to acquire in order to be an active participant in this rich media landscape. Now this doesn't replace print literacies or how to read and write, but it definitely shows that we're reading and writing in new ways. And so credibility and judgment is one of those new media literacies. And it's being able to really effectively look at what are the sources that you're receiving this information and how much truth is in that sources. For consumers to be educated, it means we need to change the education system. We can't teach kids or even adults how they learned uh, 10, 15 years ago. This whole notion of sage on the stage needs to be removed. We need to become a guide on the side. We need to have more hands-on, practical approach of actually making and doing things and bringing that not only into the classroom, but expanding our learning to learning happening anytime and anywhere. Class doesn't end when you get your diploma. Class keeps on going until the day you die. You know, you look at new creators and makers today, and they put out more unpolished work. You know, reputation is something that maybe you, you, I mean, it's important to have a reputation, but your reputation changes as you actually learn your processes. And instead of actually being concerned about it as much, you should just be willing to be more authentic. If you do something wrong, then apologize. That's what these young adults are doing. They're, they're just out there sharing their content. And maybe they're oversharing, but they're learning new forms of privacy. They're actually evolving their identity and not getting stuck in one way. They have very much what Carol Dweck says, a growth mindset. They're willing to change and move and keep on manipulating as new media, media comes up, as new platforms, new channels appear. They start picking it up and learning it and evolving their identity and evolving their reputation. Um, so if, if you're a person that has more of a fixed mindset, is what Carol Dweck would say, you know, a fixed mindset means that you're not willing to change and adapt to the current cycle of how media is evolving so fast, how our culture and society is changing, how we're all not just local citizens anymore, but we're global citizens. And so that changes the way we even think about ourselves and our friends, our family, and who we interact with on a global scale. That's reputation. Reputation is always evolving. Another key characteristic we learn with new creators and makers, they're not in this as a zero-sum game. They're in it as collaborating with others. They don't see different networks as competitors or different YouTube stars as competitors. They look at each other and say, hey, I've got 30,000 followers and you have 50,000 followers. Why don't we make a music video together and see if we bump up our followers together? And that actually is a true case study. That actually has happened. So the more we collaborate, the more we think that we're not in it just for ourselves, but we're in it together, the better their reputation and others will, will evolve. You know, we looked at this when we were um, defining what transmedia branding means and where your brand is actually starting to move across multiple uh, channels. And the three characteristics of defining transmedia branding is collective intelligence pooling your knowledge together towards a common goal. It's about public participation, and it's about spreadability, that your brand spreads and goes into places that you never, ever thought. So when you think about that, uh, 
as much as you're going to have fans of your brand, you're going to have anti-fans of your brand. An anti-fan is a term that Jonathan Gray, who is a fan study scholar, actually writes about. And I would say, don't be afraid of those anti-fans. Don't shut down the conversation, but instead, actually engage with them in conversation. Learn their differing points of view and be able to actually modify and change or, or, or have those anti-fans understand why you're coming that way.